Good morning, everyone. This morning, we are going to elaborate a kind of highly controversial topic. This topic is known as affirmative action in English, reservation system or quota system in India. This word is the bitterest, the most hated word in India. And I can understand why. But it is not the fault of affirmative action law. Because the law was enforced by the freedom fighters, by the fathers of liberation of the nation, like Gandhiji were there, Pandit Nehru were there, Patel were there. Dr. Fule were there, Ambedkar were there. They were all legends of India. They cannot make any kind of mistake or they cannot actually pass the law or enact the law which can be discriminatory to any other class. But they wanted to do the justice with those people, those underdogs, those slum dwellers, underprivileged people, we call them Harijan. In many other communities, they were not given their rights during the colonial time and in our caste system. In our caste system, the lowest were all the Harijan. On the top were Brahmin, then Kshatriya, then Vaishya, then Sutra. Now, Sudras were left out in the society. Their rights were infringed. They were treated like dog slums or slum dogs. They did not have any kind of privilege. They did not have any kind of education, no any kind of right for job, no any kind of entitlements. So after liberation, Gandhiji and the his colleagues decided that we should actually redress, redress their grievances, and they did regress. Sorry, they did redress, I should say. They decided to redress them, and they did redress by providing them priorities and preferences in job promotions, job salaries, job hiring, education, education. Everywhere they were given preferences and they deserved it, and we owed it to them. We owed it. India started in 1947, but in America it started in 1776. Fourth of July, 1776, when America became liberated, Washington actually enacted that policy, affirmative action in their law. After that, Dr. Allen Fletcher. In 1924, again, resurrected that law, dug it up, and created the awareness among the blacks and the browns living in America who were living as a second-class citizen, underdog, slum dogs, without any kind of rights, without any kind of opportunities, without any kind of privileges. So, since 1924, affirmative action became very active, very alive, and providing all kinds of benefits to everyone, like in India. So those people who think that our founding father of the nation cheated them, means upper class, no, they did not cheat anyone. But they actually made the fair gesture. Justice was done to those people who were not given any kind of social rights, human rights, political rights, personal rights, educational rights. No rights were given to them. They were the Sudra people. So we owed it to them, and we are paying back. We are redressing them, and they deserve it. Because we took away something from them, now we are only paying them back without paying interest. I have actually chosen five points to elaborate the affirmative action ideas to clear the minds, minds of those people who are a little foggy about it, who are a little uncertain about it, who are not clear about this thing. 
and they go around and they bitch about it and bad mouth about the affirmative action which was created by the legends of the nations. George Washington was a legend of America. British people, British leaders, legends of Britain and Gandhiji, Nehru, Nehruji, Patelji, Ambedkarji, they were all the legends of India who can never actually enact any kind of law which can be discriminatory, remotely discriminatory to any one Indian, let alone entire class. But it was the due that we paid back to those Shudra people and all other people who were deprived their rights during the colonial caste system. Point number one is uplifting uplifting left out underdog classes in caste system. During the caste system, in India, during the colonial time before 1947, the caste system that I mentioned earlier, the Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Sudra. During the caste system, Sudra were on the bottom of the pyramid. That bottom of the pyramid were totally left out from all kinds of rights, no social rights, no political rights, economic rights, personal rights, human rights, no rights. After 1947 or liberation of India, the founding father of the nation decided that now we should pay them the dues. The dues that we owed them, we must pay them and that is why the affirmative action or that a quota system or reservation system came into our law. Point number two, assisting underprivileged who were hindered by bias, prejudice, and social discrimination. These class or these classes were subjected to severe, gruesome, humiliating discrimination, bias, all kinds of all kinds of discriminations, prejudice, and all that. And because of that, these classes were left behind at the bottom of the society. They did not have any kind of right, no privileges. They were not in business. They were not in banking. They were not in education. They were not in healthcare. They were not in politics. Only the thing they were doing is sanitation. They were only working as sanitation workers, cleaning the, cleaning the cities and the streets. Now, we, now, after liberation, it was the high time that we pay our due to them. We owe them to give them their rights, opportunities, and all the things that they have lost must be paid back. So we assist them rather than hindering them. Point number three, affirmative action creates only white swans for the nation and zero Gray swans. Those people who can understand, they can understand this thing. The why they create this kind of affirmative actions creates a white swan. Look, if the ten percent people, only the ten percent people in the nation who are useless, who are considered as a slum dog, who are kicked out of the system, who are not given education, who are not given opportunity, who are not given work, then 10% of the people become, in, become dependent upon the 90% of the people. 90% of the people who are earning or working, they have to support this 10% people. These 10% people become what they call public charge. We have to provide them bread and butter, we have to provide them clothes and shelter, housing and medical facilities. And affirmative action actually changed all that. Thanks to affirmative action, those classes which were idle, useless, redundant, pointless classes were also brought into the system and now they are also productive, who were underproductive, unproductive, and non-productive, even counterproductive. These classes are now productive classes. So that is the benefit or white swan to the nation that 10% of the people who were sitting idle on their duff, now they are in the forefront of the society, working, 
shoulder to shoulder with other classes. So that is the best dividend that nation derives. Number four, reducing their grievances of colonial caste system. During the colonial time, in the British time, the caste system was flourishing in India. And uh, these people were the victim of that caste system. They were considered and treated as untouched. They were treated as bad people, in ill omen people, dirty people. And we actually did not give them any kind of opportunity to live, opportunity to educate themselves, opportunity for health care, opportunity for bread and butter, opportunity of social fairness or social justice. They did not have any kind of opportunity. They, we actually blackballed them from the society. We did not give them their habitat, their homes, in the middle of the society with all three other classes like Brahmin, Shatri, and Vaishya. Now is the time. After liberation, Gandhiji and all other legends thought that, that this is the high time that we should pay them back the due that we owe them, and that they were paid their dues. Now, th what they are getting is something that they had lost during the colonial time due to the caste system. We are paying back what we have taken away from them. It was the due. It was the dues that we have to pay them back. We borrowed something from them, now we are paying them back. Point number five. Returning their rights, which were infringed by the upper caste. Their rights were infringed, their human rights were infringed, personal rights, national, political, social, economic, educational rights were infringed, taken away from them, snatched away from them, looted from them. We were considered them as burden of best. They were not human, but kind of subhuman. And now, after 1947, the realization came that they are also human just like us. And we, we have no right to discriminate or prejudice or bias these people. And then after 1947, we decided to, be, to redress them, to pay them the dues, what we owe them, and what we have been doing under the affirmative action or under a quota system or under reservation system is nothing but we are returning their rights to them which were delayed to them, which were deprived to them, which were taken away from them by treating them as inhumane or subhumane people. So. These are the five points about affirmative action, which is affirmative. It, it has nothing negative about it. But what actually happens in India is not the fault of the affirmative action. Gandhiji and Pandit Nehru were not trivial people who can make any kind of blunder and do anything to discriminate any class or any individual. But this affirmative action in India is abused, misused by the people in authority. When you apply for the medical seat, then they will tell you that affirmative, under the affirmative action, all those ABC and OBC people have taken all the seat and we don't have any seat left. But when you offer them one crore rupees, they will create the seat for you. Government knows it, but government does not dare to do anything. Abdul Kalam, Abdul Kalam, who were the President of the nation discussed about it on several occasions, but government did not initiate any kind of action against that. Abul Kalam said that I don't understand why they don't have seats. Create the seats. If there are 100 students demanding the seat, have 100 seats. If there are 200 students demanding the seat, create 200 seats. But no. It is the law of economy. Demand goes up, the price goes up, only if supply does not go up. So they create the demand, but they don't create supply. So demand goes up, the supply remains low, and the price goes up. They will tell you there is no seat. 
affirmative action. They are going to blame affirmative action for that. But when you offer them what they call is so-called pseudo-donation, when you offer them one crore rupees donation, a, they have hundreds of seats available. So these kind of bigots, this kind of corrupt and wily people in the business community, I mean in the education community, which has turned education into a corrupt, adulterated, while absolutely polluted and contaminated business. Education is converted into business by these dirty people. And that is why affirmative action in our eyes, in the eyes of the student, is blemish, is bad, is a dirty word, but it is the most precious, sacrosanct, and sacred holy world. Thank you very much for listening. That's all the time we have. Talk to you tomorrow. Until then, God bless everyone on this planet. Amen.